What does a micro tiny dude and a coin have to do with today's leather working adventure? Stick around folks and find out. The tale starts with a woman who goes to Merlin the magician for assistance. She and her husband are unable to have children. Merlin casts a spell and tells the woman that her and her husband will have a child, but that child will be no larger than her husband's thumb. Sure enough, a few months later, the woman gives birth to a boy no larger than her husband's thumb. Now you may ask what this all has to do with our leatherworking project. Well, today, folks, we are making a Tom Thumb coin purse. All right. Now that we talked about Tom Thumb a little bit, let's get into making this Tom Thumb purse. We've got kit here. Uh, it says you're going to need a crafting knife. We've got that, mallet or pliers, and leather finish. Uh, the mallet is actually optional in this. And we're going to kind of just like stamp our way through this quickly. I'm not going to like elaborate on it. We did cover stamping in a previous tutorial. Essentially, just going to uh, sponge the surface of the leather here, get it wet, let it soak in for a little bit, and then we're going to apply some stamping to it. Now, with the instructions here for the kit, oh, I think our needle too will need this needle. Why is it taped in there? That's weird. This is a different kind of needle. It actually, the stuff we're going to use is like a kind of like a cord of some sort. And we're just, this actually just like hooks in there. And then you can use this piece as a needle to weave through these items. So we'll do that. But we are going to do a stamping here first. So we will fast forward and we'll have it done. And a snap. So let's talk about Tom a little bit. Tom was not like other children. He wore tiny clothes and in playing with the other kids he gets locked in a tiny box. His mother tries to protect him by keeping him home but his small size poses dangers for him even there. Tom falls into his mother's batch of Christmas pudding that is gifted to the town's tinkerer. The tinkerer notices Tom before eating the pudding and returns him back home. Let's talk about Tom a little bit more later and let's get back to our project. Alright so like I said the magic. We're back. You heard some more about Tom. And now we have a basket weed pattern on this. So now the only thing that's left is to take this material and stitch uh, using a whip stitch, they call it, and get it through. So um, on this material, one side of it is uh, flat and the other side's a little bit glossy, so you have to be conscious of that because you want the glossy stuff to be exposed on the outside. And these needles, they come apart somehow. And basically they like stick into this and become essentially part of the cord. So we gotta accomplish that first. These are a pain in the butt too, so um, especially if you don't have nails, maybe use our knife here and pull it up carefully so that we don't chop our fingers off. Might have to grab one of my other ones. I have these from other kits too. This one's actually like stuck stuck so um, that's why you keep your old ones folks. That's why you keep your old ones. So let's grab that we'll just throw it to the side because that's not going to be of any use to us. Let's get in here. So we always keep the old needles on everything we do. Because you will break these. You'll break tons of these. Especially these ones. These ones, they don't last very long. The ones for the cord like this, they don't generally last very long. There we go. We got it apart. Alright, so we got to get the cord through. Now there's going to be like two teeth on this thing. I'm probably not going to be able to show you it, so you're going to just have to trust me. We're going to get in here with another tool to keep this open. Oh, maybe we won't. Let's see. Alright, so now we're pushing down. And then you basically just like get it in there and then we're going to want to oops it's probably going to take longer than the rest of the video this is like the hard part 
Let's get something in there. Right, so you get them through, and then generally what you want to do is you want to just give it a tiny tap with the hammer to lock it in place. There we go. So we're locked in place now, and it wants us to start with this piece, and it wants us to leave a, so this way, so leave a two-inch strip at the end of it. So we're going to get through it here. Um, this one is a little bit difficult to get through. Um, this slit that's ripped through here. Um, the rest of it's not as nearly as difficult. So, kind of getting it through here. I said once two inches ish left. Um, oh shit! On the inside, we're on the outside. Okay, so we're going to re-whip through, but this should be easier now that we poke through it once. Um, we actually got to get that on the inside, probably so that we can tie it off once we're done. So let's try this again the right way. Uh, da -da -da -da. Here we go. All right, so we're going to leave about two inches or so. And we're going to stitch. So this is going to be called a whip stitch. So now that we're here, we've gone through, we got this piece here. The next one is going to go through the circle next to the triangle. And then we're going to go into the circle here. Basically, we're going to be like turning this into like a taco. So we got it through. So now we're going to pull all this through. There we go. So we got, here we go, we want this stuff to be on the outside there like that. All right, so we got our first one through. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be whipping through and stitching, and it's going to create one side at a time. Remember I said that one side of this is glossy, one side of it is not. So you're going to want to pull all of your slack like this each time. It's kind of annoying, but you want to do it right. And then we're just whipping through the next hole on this side and the next hole on this side. I'm going to pull it through. And the same thing, make sure you have your your thread the way you want it. We're going through again. This might happen too. You might get it bunched up like that. Um, just work it through. So then we got a nice stitch there. Um, got a little bit of a curve right there. I don't like that. Um, but we can fix that here. So see, it'll like spin and it'll expose the dull side if you're not careful. So we're just going to pull that tight for now. And maybe you can't avoid it. I just try to. I try to make it look nice. Alright, so we're coming back through again. So we're going to get this stitch. And then we're going to be whipping through this stitch here. So as we're pulling, we're making the, we're making the taco. Oh, and they're nice and you gotta make sure you poke. Oh, that wasn't good. All right, so we're gonna have to fix that. All right, let's take a little break and talk about Tom a little bit more. So Tom then gets eaten and passed by a cow later on, and his mom gives him a bath to clean up all of the yummy stuffs on him. At this point, Tom's father decides to take the reins to try to keep his son safe, but not long after, a raven swoops down and picks Tom up and carries him off. Tom then gets eaten by a giant who doesn't enjoy the taste of young Tom and pukes him out into the sea, where Tom is finally eaten by a fish. 
We'll talk more about Tom in a minute. Let's get back to our crafting. All right, we're back. So what we're going to settle on is we are going to go through with a white to get some contrast. But we are going to do, because we're doing thread and not the lace, we're going to do a double whip stitch. You know what? I just went backwards through this again. All right, let's start off on the right foot again. So here we go. So see, that's why you always got materials around, around in case you need them. You know, it would have been nice to have some of that material, but to be honest, I really don't like, it's like plasticky. I don't really care for it to begin with. So, you know, like I might've been inclined to do this from the get go. All right. So we're going to leave about two inches out and we got to start again next to the Next to there's a slit instead of circles and the first time I did one of these I messed that up I didn't realize that and I started going YOLO on uh, some other stuff. All right, so now we're gonna just start over we're gonna do But we're gonna do um, a double whip stitch So we're actually gonna go through it twice and it's gonna cause some chaos probably um, Yeah, it's already causing chaos because we got a whole pile of String here. Um, it'll get better as we get closer to the closer to being caught up here on the end. But these first bits are going to be something else. All right. So we whip through once. And like I said, we're going to do a double whip stitch. So we're going to go through it again, the same hole. And we're basically going to just go through each hole twice, just to give it a little bit extra durability. Um, in all honesty, this wax thread is probably better than the other stuff, but I just want to take a little bit of extra precaution and I'll get it through. Um, if you're doing this for a customer or something like that, you know, you definitely wouldn't do it this way, but, um, <clears throat> because we're doing this just as a project, I want to see how it turns out. I want to see what it looks like when it's done. So we got what double there. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to double the next one. Actually, you know what? I only see a single there. It should be two. So let's get this one a second time. And remember how to count. Remembering how to count to be good. The trade-off is this looks more like, oops, what's we got going on here? All right. Holy shit, I got a mess over here, guys. Wow. Right, let's get through the mess here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're, we're back on track now. Let's move this out a little bit. Yeah, that's in. All right, oh, let's move it out so we can see what's going on here. All right, so we're going through. All right, we got that one done up. What do we got in the middle here? What is this shit? Why? String is choosing violence today, guys. Okay, I see what's going on. There we go. All right, so we got our two again through here. Oh, that's our first one, sorry. Can't count today. So we're going through a second time. There we go. We're back on track. So we keep getting caught in things. Um, I probably should just clean this up. Get rid of some of this stuff. There you go. All right. We're good. All right. There's our one. And our two. I probably cut more than I needed, but I wanted to be safe. So now, as we start going through this one side here, it should start pulling in and start turning into like the, the actual coin purse design.
And while I'm working on this, why don't we talk a little bit more about Tom Thumb? All right, so the fish gets caught by the fisherman, and the fisherman brings his catch to the king's court. Uh, the king's cook opens up the fish, finds Tom, and delivers the young Tom Thumb to the King Arthur himself. So let's get back to this project. All right, so we're about a little over the halfway point. You can see we got the taco formed. And now we're just going to be finishing up stitching the rest of this. We're going to have to tie off on the inside through here. And that's a wrap for us. So uh, enjoy the rest of the story about Tom Thumb. And when I see you back, we're going to be holding a finished one, folks. All right, the end of the story as it pertains to our crafting adventure is that Tom gets appointed to the king's court and is adored by everyone. At one point in the story, the king asks Tom about his family. Tom advises the king that his parents are of normal size and live in the town, but they are very poor stature. The king, in his love for Tom, takes Tom to his treasury and says, you can carry anything out of here and bring it back to your parents. So here's where our actual relevance to the project comes in. So Tom Thumb creates a coin purse out of a water bubble and he loads it with a three uh, three penny pence that's made out of silver. Through grueling effort he finally brings this coin in the purse back to his family and his parents are able to eat and live out their lives. Tom himself he returns back to the court and lives out his days with King Arthur. Now let's go look at our finished product and Wrap things up, folks. All right. So we're coming down to the end of it here. Hope you've enjoyed the rest of that story about Tom Thumb. It was rather interesting. We should have double stitches at least on all these. There's probably a triple somewhere in there. But you know what? Who's counting? Yeah, I should have been, but I probably wasn't. So we're getting down towards the end over here. We just got four holes to stitch yet. And then we got the middle one where we're going to get inside here and tie it off. And then that's going to be the end of it. Um, we already did the I already did the coloring of it. I just did a, a one-step leather dressing after I stamped it. Uh, just smooths it out and uh, seals it in. Doesn't change the color at all. But, you know, in, in this case, I really didn't want to change the color. I could have. I could have went darker. I could have went a different color altogether. But, you know, sometimes you just want the all-natural thing. All right, so we're coming down to the last two here, and then we got our um, that last spot isn't actually a hole that you go through. It's one that you just send it through and then you're able to tie it off on the inside. So here's our last actual stitch. And then the final one's just gonna go inside and that's it, it's not gonna come out. So we got one more round here for the two. And now we're sending it home. All right, so when we send it, we're coming out through the top this and now inside we're gonna have these two cords right that we stitched so um, we're gonna just lob off some of this here some of this extra so we're not gonna need it for sure and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tie a knot and then for this inside this inside stuff that's left over we're going to um, after we tie the knot we'll just burn it down if I can even tie the knot holy shit um, we'll try pushing it in a little bit. There we go. We got a little bit more real estate to work with. Go. Come on. You can do it, little man. Oh, crap. Um, yeah. Let's try going from this way. Problem is this cord is a little bit too short. I should have made it a little bit longer. So now we're going to have to get it to come up. We're going to have to kind of force it. And we just got to get it to tie once. Nothing elaborate, just one time. There's enough stitching here. That's going to hold it pretty good. But we just can't have it 
not tied. There we go. I think I got it. All right, we did. So I'm going to send that knot down. I want it to go all the way down to the bottom here. Come on, little knot. You got it. This also helps that with tweezers for some of these things, especially if you got bigger hands. Uh, bigger hands are a pain in the ass. So let's cut it off right there. And it's really like, I really don't want to burn inside of there, to be honest with you. So we'll fix the taco. And we zip her up. And there we have it, our Tom Thumb purse. Hello everybody, I hope you enjoyed this leather working adventure. And on our next adventure, we are going to be looking at a knife sheath. We are going to do some stamping, um, some stitching, and some riveting. What a riveting story it will be. Until next time, be inspired, be inspiring, and growl louder. Peace everyone.